iOS 16, iOS 16 versus iOS 17. iOS 17 will be out soon and with its release, all the new iPhone 15 models. Apparently many iOS 16 users had some troubleshooting. It seemed like iOS 16 took a serious toll on the iPhone's battery life and users were experiencing slower performances on their devices. Not a surprise with all the new features that came to iOS 16. Apple Design we recently reached 2 million followers on Instagram, over 300,000 followers on TikTok and we're on the road on 100,000 followers on YouTube. Let's focus on iOS 70, the control center. After more than six years, we'll finally get a redesigned control center. At least that's what various sources are confirming. It was about time. iOS 11 released in 2017 had the latest control center update. Restyled control center is expected to be one of Apple's major highlights in iOS 17. With one swipe from the top of your screen, you have access to many useful shortcuts. For now, Apple has made their own selection of native apps to choose from for example notes calculator or the memos app however one of the biggest issues with the control center in ios 16 was the lack of customization iphone users are screaming for more personalized control center and this is likely to come in ios 17 having access to the basic settings like wi-fi cellular airplane mode and bluetooth is great but it would be extraordinary if everyone could create their own preferred control center so let people control the control center. Imagine this, what if we could long press a shortcut in the control center and it goes in the exact jiggle mode as with the home screen. Now you can add, delete and rearrange all icons to your liking. The lock screen, another interesting change will likely come to the lock screen. In iOS 16, Apple completely changed the lock screen. We now have multiple options to edit the lock screen with selected wallpapers, widgets, text fonts and filters. With iOS 17, we get the possibility for font customization. This could mean we have more font options and we can change the font thickness. The ability to download and add custom fonts was introduced in iOS 13. So it's actually odd that this didn't make it to the lock screen yet. In addition, we will likely be able to create wallpapers with a personal emoji or animal, adjust the level of the start screen blur and a very interesting option to share your lock screen and wallpapers with your friends and family. Here's a side note what you need to keep in mind. Of course, all the new updates we will talk about are not 100% confirmed yet, as Apple is known for maintaining a tight lid on its software updates, meaning that many details may not be revealed until the actual launch. What we do know, however, is that the first beta of iOS 17 will be out in June, and that the devices that will support iOS 17 are the following, the iPhone SE 2nd generation 2020 and 3rd generation 2022, the iPhone XR and the iPhone XS that was released in 2018, all the iPhone 11 models released in 2019, all the iPhone 12 models released in 2020, the iPhone 13 models from 2021, and the iPhone 14 models released in 2022. And of course, all the new iPhone 15 models, which will be released later this year. This unfortunately means that Apple will no longer provide support for the iPhone 8, the iPhone 8 Plus, and the iPhone 10. Love Apple Music, but hate the jumbled look. iOS 17 could fix it with the new Apple Music music user interface. The design of the music app will be much more simplified. The user interface improvements are rumored to see Apple reduce certain text elements, UI and add new images and graphics to the app. One major change is a new lock screen lyrics view, which would show live song lyrics displayed on the iPhone's lock screen. This means some nice karaoke nights. Another minor frustration many users seem to have is the lack of a crossfade audio feature. Let's hope that with iOS 7, this will be a thing of the past. Side loading. Apple tipped to introduce side loading. Basically means that iPhone users are able to download apps hosted outside of the App Store. In other words, it would allow customers to download apps without needing to use the App Store, which would mean developers wouldn't need to pay Apple's 15 to 30% fee. This would be the first time ever. The possibility of side loading apps has generated excitement among certain iOS users, as it would bring a level of similarity with Android. Although there hasn't been an official confirmation, the EU's consistent pressure on the tech giant could potentially compel the company to introduce this feature in Europe at the very least. Knowing Apple, they will make it nearly impossible 
impossible for users outside of Europe to get access to side loading. And this makes sense as Apple will lose quite some money. Talking about money, Apple Wallet will get a revamp. Sources are saying that we might get a redesigned wallet app. This is no surprise to us at Apple Design as Apple is gaining ground in the finance space with the launch of Apple Savings, the buy now pay later option, and of course the Apple Card. It would be in line with Apple's plans to see a design like this given the many functions the wallet app now serves in addition to storing credit and debit cards. We will likely have tabs and search features being added to the redesigned wallet app. However, too many functionalities in the Apple Wallet could look disorganized. Challenge for Apple to make this as simplified as possible. Flashlight brightness slider. We can only increase or decrease the brightness of our flashlight by quarter increments. With the launch of iOS 17, we will likely have the possibility to literally hover over our slider and choose the intensity. So you could, for example, set up the brightness to 54% or 12%. Another security feature linked with the flashlight that might get released is called notify about danger. This SOS alert function will flash at a max brightness with intervals when turned on. Apple's next big iPhone software update we could see is the familiar digital assistant have its user interface integrated into the dynamic island. A little reminder, the dynamic island is the not replacing interface Apple introduced in 2022 with the launch of the iPhone 14 Pro. It would have been possible for Apple to relocate Siri to the dynamic island earlier, but it appears to be more reasonable for them to do it in iOS 17. This is because there are rumors that Apple plans to equip all iPhone 15 models, both Pro and non-Pro versions, with dynamic islands instead of notches. Sources are also saying more app notifications will be added to the dynamic island, which we at Apple Design definitely think will be the case. Another essential iOS staple, the camera app, could also be in for a host of changes, most likely regarding the user interface and its layout. Those might only arrive for the iPhone 15 models though. These models are expected to introduce yet another major camera upgrade to the iPhone camera in general. Interactive widgets on the home screen. Another feature being rumored is active widgets, which has the potential to introduce truly interactive widgets with clickable buttons, sliders, and other elements for users to engage with. This would be a notable enhancement from the predominantly informative widgets currently available in iOS. However, it's uncertain if this feature will be ready for iOS 17's release as Apple seemed to already have a lot on its plate. WWDC has been scheduled for the 5th of June. Then we'll probably get some more glimpses on how iOS 17 could look like and its new features. Following the keynote, the initial iOS 17 beta version is expected to be promptly released to members of Apple's developers program, while public beta version is anticipated to be available for members of Apple's beta software program in July. Typically, the update is released to the general public in September, around the same time as the launch of the new iPhone models. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to put them in the comments. Thanks for watching and I wish you an amazing rest of your day. Peace.